Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today, I'm giving a game a little bit of a go. Now, this is Planet Base. It's a strategy sort of um, colony building game, and we're going to hop straight into it. I've already done the tutorial, so I know a little bit about it, and we're going to access one of these planets. So we've got a Class D, and then we've got some locked ones. But what we can actually do is scroll and pick the location we want of our base. So let's actually call this Outpost 1. So outpost one. So there we go. We'll have a little bit of a space as well since it's our first place on the actual planet. And we'll start the game. So here is our little dropship coming down to land. Having all our colonists and important people on board, I'm guessing. Uh, the thrusters are firing. And uh, the ramp should come down, hopefully. If it doesn't lock them all in. There we go. Now we've got a variety of different power ranges coming out. So there we are, we've arrived on the planet's surface. I think I saw an asteroid in the background hit or something. But we're actually going to start building our base. Now, when I was watching or playing this tutorial, they started with an oxygen farm, so we're actually going to try our best to replicate that tutorial for safety purposes. So you can see our little robots are actually going into the, the colony sort of dropship and collecting out the supplies we need. Oh shit, it sounds like there's asteroids landing all over. That wasn't in the tutorial. How to deal with asteroids. Right, we'll speed up the time anyway. We'll put the plus on that. And we'll actually start building some other areas as well. So there we go. We've actually just placed our airlock down. You can see our colonists are actually getting to work, carrying them supplies. We've also got the little robots here. I think we've got a construction bot. And what's this guy here? A carrier bot. And they're welding up the power towards that building. We can connect up the buildings as well. Simple connection point. And now... Oh, this, this asteroid's like pretty much everywhere. Look at that. Oh, it's left a little crater and stuff. Hopefully my buildings are not on the other end of them. Okay, so we need to continue adding different parts. We've got an airlock. Now, what was the next thing in the tutorial? Was it a canteen? I think it was a canteen. We'll, we'll, we'll go for that. We'll hope that's the next option. We need to feed our people some way. Connect that up to that. Solar panels tracking across there. I'm guessing we're going to need a wind generator as well, so that we can have power at night. Right, so we're doing a little bit better. We've got some of the basics of things on supply. We've got the oxygen generator in the center that requires water to be extracted from the planet. And so we can actually start producing some oxygen. You can see the oxygen generator is actually starting to power up. We can also tab down and see our people with inside the colony. We've got a lot of people out of O2, so they don't have to head back and recharge. We've also got a power cell, and we also have a wind turbine, so we have power at night as well. And luckily, it's gone dark, so just in the nick of time by the look of it. So let's actually head back and see what else we can add. So we've got a canteen, but we've not actually got anything in it, so we can start adding some tables. Uh, we're going to need a food processor, but we're going to need, I think we need vegetables for that first. So let's get seats in. Uh, what else can we actually add? We can add some fancy bits. Video screen, let's add one of them in. Uh, and a drinking fountain, that's all pretty much important stuff. And we'll go back to that, and we'll actually add our first bio lab. Bio lab, bio lab. There we go, we can actually build that. Where should we put this though? Should we put it near the power? Oh, what should we put all? Yeah, we'll put our food resources right next to each other there so they can actually connect up quite quickly. So the key parts, I think, of living on a planet are water, food, oxygen. We've got the oxygen sorted. We have a water pump providing water. The canteen is going up now. We've just got the um, little drinking fountain installed. We've got a biodome here that I'm going to install shortly, and that should provide some food for this area. So let's actually just check that and make sure we've got a food creator. So a meal maker that will make the meals from the food that's produced there. You can see we've got some workers carrying different components into that area, providing with some food. He's actually eating it on the floor since our desks are not up. I just hate the sound of them. Asteroids are going off in the background. Really deep thuds. We've not had any sort of impacts yet on anything, so we seem to be pretty fine. That's charging up quite nicely. Are we depleting? No, we're not depleting. Great. Right, I'll cut back when I've got a little bit more built. The accommodation block here is still taking time to build, so we've not got any beds for people to sleep either yet. So as you can see, the base has come along a little bit further. We've actually got a mine constructed, our um, area for sleeping and resting, our accommodation block is constructed. We've got the rest of the kitchen complete, as well as having some workers actually constructing our plants, onions. And we've also got food that doesn't act as actual food, but acts as starch as resources for our materials. Oh, that was a bloody close asteroid as well. So we've got these other parts to connect up, so we'll connect that up to that. Connect them to that, and then we've got another connection point there. So they'll all be welding up and connecting the different components. Construction bots going well. So these can actually get damaged, I found out as well. You see they've got a little repair icon, and at the moment it's only half, and that's why I need to get a workshop completed pretty damn fast, so I can actually get tools to repair the robots, so I don't have to rely on my Connolly... My, uh, my, con my Connolly... I, 
Colony workers, that's probably the word I'm looking for, to actually do all the work themselves. So let's actually have a look, sick bay. We've only got the lab there, the lab's done heavy help to make medical supplies. It's, it's quite complicated, luckily the tutorial explains a lot of it, or else you'd be, you'd be really stuck. And if we do that, we can put the domes back on, we need to connect them areas up. And we've got quite a nice little base coming, and once we're self-sufficient with our seven workers up here and two bots, we can actually start bringing some more people in via dropship, so that should be pretty cool as well. But this game seems quite interesting, it's pretty much like a traditional sort of building game, like a bit like Civilization, Rome, when you used to build all the buildings, just like that, but on a planetary base level. Rather cool. Oh shit! Now, it looks like we've just had our first very close asteroid strike. Now, it didn't take out anything, but it landed very close to our resources here. So, it would be very nice to actually get them inside. So, that was the first, the closest asteroid strike we've actually had on the position. It looks like we've got some unhappy workers as well. So, I guess we're going to have to try to boost the morale. Maybe add a bar in. Let's have a look what sort of morale boosting activities we have. We've got a multi-dome, multi-purse leisure center fitness. Okay. We've also got bar enjoy some drinks so we'll stick a bar in but how, how bad could that be and we'll put it right next to the storage area should we or should we have it near the entrance uh to, yeah we'll have it near the entrance here just where the asteroid landed before it, it won't strike it likely never strikes in the same spot but two asteroids we'll have to see connect that up to that and there we go someone's repairing a little drone in the corridor there as well Look at that. that's cool oh, oh it looks like we've got our first people arriving by some nifty looking dropship as well oh the ramp's coming down at the back Let's see who we've got. Expansion reached. We've got one. Will we get any more people out of there? Is it just one man come? Mohammed Wilkins. <laughs> Our first extra settler. Oh, a drop ship. Very nice. Quite big, quite oversized, but it still looks rather cool. It's got these sort of vertical takeoff thrusters as well. I want to see it take off though. No, oh, I think it, I think he's staying here. Where's Mohammed gone? Hmm. Can't even see him. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Oh wow, that's cool. I hope there's bigger ships in the future. We've got we've built a few other things by the way, I forgot to say. We've got an antenna building up here. So the idea of this is to contact other spaceships that are passing past the planet. We've got a security area here. Now we can produce weapons, but I don't actually have any weapons in the armory at the moment, and we've got some other desks that are about to be constructed, and these desks will allow us to produce different things. Now I didn't talk about this before. This is actually the way we're producing our materials. We've got a metal processor that processes it directly from the mine over there, and we also have our bio paste. So this basically makes our plastic, not bio paste, bioplastics, so we can make other sorts of structures as well. Our beginning resource pile is getting a little bit low, as you can see. We've got some spare parts and other parts, so we don't actually start having to add a few more structures just to get more resources to the central area so it's going to get a little bit complicated but we've not had any intruders yet and apparently so if I've, I've added this security area or control center and we have these different buildings so that's a security console it has a guard that mon monitors suspicious areas or well, suspicious activity so this can detect an intruder before it kills anyone so this sounds like there's a lot there's a lot to come here so let's just keep my eye out my room full of pasta what is it let's actually have a look pasta meal just, just a room. This is my storage room, but all this storage is pasta, so I don't know what the plans are for the future of this. I'd expect some metal or something, but I guess as soon as the metal is uh, produced, it's being used. Another beautiful day at Outpost 1. We're in the midst of a storm. You can see I've extended my food producing facilities upwards, so we can actually account for our 25 members of this outpost now. So you can actually see, we'll head a little bit further up here. I've increased the number of solar arrays as well as wind farms. So we can actually produce a lot more. We had a small water problem as well, so I've added a little bit of a water tank and another water extractor. We now have three reactors as well to charge up, so this lasts us through the night on the power that we collect in the day. And that's only if we use solar panels. So we've got a lot of redundancies and I think that is key to winning in this game. Have a lot of redundancies. If there's a problem, you can have a backup of a backup of a backup to keep everyone alive. But we're doing pretty well. It's quite enjoyed. It's a rather relaxing building game. Not too fast paced. No one's invaded yet or killed anyone. So we'll have to see. Solar flare. In, in a minute. Oh, this is not good. Now, we've got a lot of people dying of radiation sickness because of that solar flare. The the one thing that does kind of annoy me a little bit about this game, I wish you could just, like, grab people, pick them up, and drop them in the station. Like, no one is actually heading over to the workbench station. We've got one guy who's deciding to build one of the other stations, but we need someone over there desperately, and I'd prioritise this area. But the people are taking the time getting there. I just wish I could grab someone and assign them directly to that desk to get working. 
because it's just in these dire situations you need to be able to do that but at the moment you can't and it's getting it's getting a lot of people killed via sort of radiation i think we're gonna lose another woman here who's in that bed let's actually have a look can we see her name uh eden carlson no she's not doing too well have we got anyone else suffering radiation sickness that have not gone to the hospital yet no Okay, we've run out of medical supplies. We're welding up that, so we've got some extra meat being cooked. But we've just not got anyone attending the bloody scientific lab. Now, I guess you could say we've run into a little bit of a problem. Everything is out of power, and one of the pure reasons behind this is that nobody wanted to build any spare parts. We, we had materials for the spare parts, but just no one visited the spare parts machine, and it did have power at the time. Everyone was just focused in doing other things, and the priority system, as it works... Uh, well-ish, it would be great if you could manually assign the people to the job. Maybe there is a way of doing it, and I, I don't know, but at the moment they seem just, just to be standing. Like, these people could be fixing something, but they can't fix it because there's no spare parts. Because there's no spare parts because no one was working on the machine when there was time to build spare parts. So, that, that's quite the dilemma, really. And, and you can see, we've got our first death, I think, of lack of oxygen, perhaps. And we've just got a constant, there we go, died of starvation. Now, it, it, I'm sure there's there's quite enough supplies, or maybe I'm just a horrible base builder, and I shouldn't attempt to ever start a colony on a planet. But as you can see, the power is constantly going on, on and off, and it's reaching just the early hours of the morning, so hopefully power will pick up. But power won't pick up, because there was no spare parts ever built, so it just built this massive knock-on effect that ended up failing my base. But I did give it a go. Strategy games of this nature are a bit new to me. I used to play Civilization Rome a lot back in the day. Okay, thank you. I know there's thousands of structures offline. But um, this is a diff very different cup of tea. Managing oxygen, water, and building your own food is quite a challenge. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.